Absolutely. Mo moving on to the last two points um, that Terry Jones make, makes uh, is about essentially the interface between Islam and the West. And, and his first statement is that um, he believes that deepened Islamic teaching and culture is a hatred and a loathing of the West. Um, and I suppose uh, for, for perhaps some, some Westerners who don't have a knowledge of Islam, they might think that that's true, that, that, that Muslims hate the West. Um, and the reason that they hate it is because Islam tells them to hate it. The most you can say is that people among the Muslims who've had their countries invaded, who've had their homes attacked, their loved ones killed by people from the West, those people might have a grudge against Westerners as such, or the West as such as one big block, maybe. But the thing is, there is not this deep-seated fear of the West or hatred towards the West at all. Not at all. Islam turns its face as from the very beginning of its, at its inception towards the West as, be, as it's a, a religion for all mankind. And indeed, a lot of people in the West accepted Islam right into the, the depths of Europe. I mean, it's just whatever people are pushing into their minds, it doesn't necessarily exist. Of course, yes, you can understand. There is certain situations which has nothing to do with Islam. It's, uh, if anything, it's culturally based. It is something children are fed in from a very young age, from one family, mm. and then... And this is Muslim clerics, usually. You'll yeah. see, not only Muslim <coughs> clerics, but clerics of any religion which are extreme, uh, you know, in the, the, the extreme forms of those religions, I mean. You'll see them breeding hatred in their speeches, in their, in their so wor we, places we of worship. We do see them. extremists in, in certain countries, don't we? And we see them in, in Christians as well, yeah. in America in particular. Well, it's, 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 it's the same. On both I, sides, yeah. Sometimes if you just swap over the faces and just change the words slightly in the speeches, it could have been made by, a, by a, you know, um, uh, how would I say, an extremist rabbi in Israel. It could have been made uh, just as well by an extremist mullah in Pakistan, or it could have been made by a Bible thumper no, in, no, in, no, in, no, in America. In, in, it's in the same that. discourse, it's the same, it's hatred. Mm. And hatred is from Satan. Satan wants to devise us. Satan wants to separate us from each other and that we do not love each other. We hope that Dr. Terry Jones will now read the Quran and then maybe he might slightly, hopefully, change his views on what he's said. Gain more understanding about what Islam really stands for from that point of view. Yeah. The, f the final point that he makes is that he believes essentially that Islam is a political tool. Uh, and he says Islam is a weapon of Arab colonialism and he says Islamic colonialism. Uh, and he says that wherever Islam has made gains in political power, then the people of other religions suffer, so Christians, Jews, uh, all non-Muslims, essentially, they, they suffer, they're persecuted. Well, that's, they're that's quite, I think that's quite fresh coming from, from a Christian, where we, where we know, and we do not, as Muslims, condemn neither Christ nor Christianity for the, what I'm about to say now. But he's talking about Christian and other communities suffering other, under so-called Muslim colonialism, whereas Christianity was used as a tool of colonialism for centuries. Absolutely. And they didn't <coughs> only make people suffer those Christians who went there, they, they wiped them out. They've, they've been obliterated. Hundreds and hundreds of languages, cultures, peoples have gone forever. Look, They're not look, there anymore. Look, but look, do we blame Christ and Christianity yeah, for that? Look, no. Look, and, and he also mentions this idea of forced, forced conversions and, and uh, sort of violence against, against those people. And I suppose that comes into the idea of, of a violent jihad, this, this misconception of a violent jihad. And, I mean, th this idea has been around for a very long time, as we know, and is even promoted by some extremist Muslims, and certainly is promoted by certain people in the West. This idea is pushed that Islam um, promotes violent jihad and is all about violent jihad. In fact, they only, you know, in fact, Terry Jones, you know, almost his, his, his thesis is that, that jihad and, and the suppression of other people is what Islam is all about. But the, there's, a, there's a, a certain reality there that the jihad, in, in that sense, doesn't, doesn't really uh, ma uh, make any sense from the point of view of Islamic teaching. It doesn't make sense at all from the point, point of view of Islamic teaching. As we had said earlier, jihad is a struggle for peace, for truth, and for protection of life, property, and honor. And uh, this is what jihad is, it's self-defense. That's all it is. So the West, the, the populations living in the West they have to wake up to reality. Are they going to keep on swallowing wholesale whatever these so-called specialists throw at them? That, oh, we've, we've seen it all. You know, Islam is this and Islam is that. But by the way, we haven't even read the Quran. We haven't even gone to see what Sharia is about. We haven't got, gone to see his, the history of Islam. But, but we're telling you it's evil. 
How long are they going to stay asleep and, 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 and let this, this discourse of hatred divide us like this? Absolutely. It has to stop. I, I remember once uh, in, in Hyde Park, after I became Muslim, there was a Texan minister who was pre preaching hatred towards Islam. And I and others who met with him, and obviously we had long weeks of discussion. And uh, just by meeting us, I mean myself and others, he was getting a different image of Islam. Actually, when he disappeared for about a month, and after a month when he came back, I asked him, that where, where was he? He said, just come back from Jerusalem. He actually pulled me aside, and he said to me, I have to admit, and he was whispering this to me, he said, I have to admit, I have never met such more moral, peaceful, kind, loving people than I've met in the Muslims I've met in Jerusalem. And I, I pulled him aside and I said to him, why do you think that is? Why do you think they were acting like this? They can only be acting like this because this is what they follow. They follow the teachings of Quran. They follow the Sunnah of the Holy Prophet And he had no other thing but to say, you're correct. So it means people like Dr. Terry Jones need to really take some time out, maybe sit with some Muslims, maybe even go to the, some Muslim countries and sit there. And I guarantee you, he'll come back with a different story. That's what he's not done. I think that um, now we've come to the end of these 10 points, the, 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 the 10 accusations that Dr. Terry Jones makes against the Quran, makes against uh, the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and against Islam. And, and I think what we've done is we've been able to cover all of these points and give a, a much greater idea, hopefully, for the people who've been watching uh, about the true face of Islam. I, I hope, I'm sure many people will, out of interest, will probably take this book and will probably read it. And those sensible ones will probably get through one chapter, two chapters, and probably realize, I hope, that this book is, can't be right. Rather, I would say to people that they should uh, go out and buy a book, Life of Muhammad, and find out for themselves what was Prophet Muhammad like, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Is he this evil, now a bit barrack person which he's been portrayed as? If anyone reads the book, Life of Muhammad, they will definitely come back at least accepting and agreeing, no, he was not like this at all. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, you are now out of time, and I'd like to thank uh, Jahangir Saab uh, for his participation in this discussion, and Ibrahim Saab as well. And uh, I hope that uh, this discussion has brought some enlightenment, some knowledge to our viewers at home, and given them a, a better idea of exactly what Islam stands for. Uh, and um, I hope that uh, uh, this will mean that some people will go out and, as Ibrahim Saab has said, uh, try and discover uh, to a greater depth and a greater level of understanding the true meaning of Islam. Thank you.